Counter-Strike players spend hundreds if not thousands of hours practicing their mechanics in death matches, custom maps, and even just in game. But rarely do players practice the mental aspect of kinesthetic optimization. All actions inherently have some psychological aspect that can be maximized, and all skills in Counter-Strike are no exception. We'll be looking into the method that professional athletes such as Ronaldinho, Michael Phelps, Jack Nicklaus, and athletes in more than 40 sports utilize to get the edge in their physical skills, which is that of motor imagery. But what is motor imagery? Motor imagery, in its most basic form, is the creation of a visual representation of your movements in order to enhance or conceptualize a physical skill, without actually doing the motions. But how does imagining an action help us perform said action? When you imagine yourself doing a physical skill, your brain will naturally simulate the experience of doing those movements by priming your neurons to be ready to perform that given action. Think of it like your body rehearsing what it has to do to create the movement in your head before you go out and actually perform that maneuver. Motor imagery has been the topic of research for sports psychologists for nearly 40 years and has been a pretty open secret amongst top athletes. It rarely gets discussed in mainstream esports as it is far less common to have a coach, let alone a dedicated mental coach, who would pass down some variation of this technique. The leading imagery technique is known as PETTLEP -E imagery, which is an acronym developed by Paul S. Holmes and David J. Collins in 2001 as a framework for increasing the vividness and brain stimulation for motor imagery. It's essentially a checklist for each element that your mental simulation should cover to create the most complete mental version of your actions. The first P stands for physical, imagining the feeling of your keyboard and mouse, the friction of your mouse pad, your posture and hand positioning, the physical experience of playing. The first E stands for environment, feeling out the room in which you are playing, but also if you are playing at a LAN or a different environment, making sure you can envision the area is incredibly important. The first T stands for task, where there are two ways to think of it. The first is imagining what you are physically doing to perform the task, which in this case is how far you have to move your arm, wrist, and fingers to move your mouse, and the second is imagining what you are doing in the game, how far you have to flick, or where the enemy is going to peek, etc. The second T stands for timing, which is simply getting the speed at which you perform these actions both physically and in-game as accurately as possible. L stands for learning, which can be a little bit misleading as it actually refers to making your simulation match your current stage of learning, rather than the understanding of what you did. But this is a crucial step for proper motor imagery. If you aren't able to physically perform the task that you are imagining, imagery is not going to be effective. You are probably not at the level to hit this shot, but you can hit this one. Managing your expectations is critical to getting maximum benefits from motor imagery and will ultimately help accelerate your growth. The second E stands for emotion, which is especially helpful for imagining how you would feel with the pressure of a clutch or managing your tilt in-game in case the play doesn't work. Esports can be emotionally charged, so understanding how you would feel in the moment can be valuable to performing a strat. The second P stands for perspective, picturing how the play would look. You could think of this internally, how your perspective would look in-game, or externally, by imagining how your enemies might see your play, or again if you are at a LAN, how the crowd is going to see that play. Now, as you can tell, there is no way you can incorporate all of these elements in your simulation on demand, nor is it viable from a cognitive resources perspective. Athletic tasks where imagery is the most common, such as tennis serves and golf swings, have a lot of downtime between actions, making it possible to get all of these steps included, but even using one or two of the pieces with a few shortcuts will still help you prepare for the play. It is proposed that each portion of the acronym activates a different part of the brain that eventually leads to a more successful attempt at your task. So although I personally try to imagine the physical and task elements of a play first, you could find that you struggle with pressure, and perform better preparing for what your teammates' reactions are going to be and the emotions you might feel from that. You can really pick and choose the parts that you feel you need the most preparation for, but motor imagery is one of the rare cases where quantity does beat quality in most instances, so for that, you'll need shortcuts to be able to imagine the whole list as fast as possible. The easiest shortcuts usually involve combining two or more of these elements into one process of imagination. For example, 
thinking about the task and naturally estimating the timing of the play while you are visualizing each move or understanding how far you need to physically move your mouse while also being aware of your environment. If you can reduce how many steps you have to think about prior to the play, you can greatly decrease the amount of time it takes to create a finished mental scenario. But it is also important to think how you think of these plays. For instance, if you want to focus on your aim, it's good to know that players who tend to aim train more with aimbots or aim trainers will tend to use a peripheral vision more since there are multiple targets on screen that you are actively aware of at once, while those who do more death matches or 1v1s tend to focus more on their crosser since they are trying to single out one target on each map. As a result, the brain subconsciously thinks of aim differently between these two styles, just like how it might view arm movement differently between wrist and fingertip predominant players. Reflecting and understanding why you tend to do certain motions both reflexively and intentionally will give you much greater comprehension of how to form your motor images. So when should you use motor imagery? Theoretically, if you could form perfect mental simulations before each of your plays, you probably would be twice as good as you are now, but simply not feasible. Getting each one of the steps planned out, having a perfect mental image of them, and actually having the play go exactly as you planned it is practically impossible. It's only in fringe cases that athletes will imagine entire plays or maneuvers, such as Ronaldinho imagining plays while he trains, and Shohei Otani when he sleeps apparently. If you want to imagine an entire play before it happens, it's best to do it before a game or maybe during buy time if you are fast enough. But that is if we are talking about whole plays. As I've mentioned previously, imagery is most common in sports tasks that have a lot of downtime prior to the action. But what also connects these tasks is that they are a singular action, singular being that they are performed in one fluid motion, which makes them much easier to imagine. That's not to say that hitting a tennis serve, golf swing, or passing in football is easy, but it is much easier to imagine perfect versions of these tasks when you remove a lot of the extra elements of movement, strategy, and teammate opponent responses that comes with the whole play in those sports. With Counter-Strike, we can equate this to one instance of aim, such as a flick. This is especially useful in situations where you might be watching two angles at once, where you end up just kind of alternating between them, not really watching either. But instead of trying to flick your crosshair back and forth, you can instead focus on the angle that your opponent is more likely to peek from, and use a quick motor image to prepare for the flick onto the second angle. Or instead of holding an angle with an op and instantly panicking when your opponent goes for a shoulder peek, you can use this downtime to consider the possibilities of what your opponent might do to bait out your shot, and how to deal with each response. With each repetition of this, you will get better and better at creating these mental simulations, which will be clearer, more vivid, and more accurate, and you will become more confident in recreating the exact steps that you have envisioned. And eventually, you will find that you will hit incredibly difficult shots much more consistently and execute plays that no one has ever seen before. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon.